How does a bat catch flying insects in total darkness? Bats use sound waves for communication and navigation. They emit supersonic radiation ranging from as low as 200 Hz to as high as 30,000 Hz. The sounds are emitted through the bat's nostrils or mouth and are aided by a complex flap structure to provide precise directivity to the radiation. Echo returns from the emissions allow a bat to pick out a tiny flying insect some distance ahead. Highly sensitive ears and an ability to maneuver with great agility enables many bats to fly around in a darkened cave, catching insects without fear of collision. How does a bat catch flying insects in total darkness? Bats use sound waves for communication and navigation. They emit supersonic radiation ranging from as low as 200 Hz to as high as 30,000 Hz. The sounds are emitted through the bat's nostrils or mouth and are aided by a complex flap structure to provide precise directivity to the radiation. Echo returns from the emissions allow a bat to pick out a tiny flying insect some distance ahead. Highly sensitive ears and an ability to maneuver with great agility enables many bats to fly around in a darkened cave, catching insects without fear of collision. What are some animals that have pouches? Marsupials, meaning pouched animals, differ from all other living mammals in their anatomical and physiological features of reproduction. Most female marsupials, including kangaroos, bandicoots, Wombats, banded anteaters, koalas, possums, wallabies, and Tasmanian devils possess an abdominal pouch, called a marsupium, in which their young are carried. In some small terrestrial marsupials, however, the marsupium is not a true pouch but merely a fold of skin around the mammy milk nipples. The short gestation period in marsupials, in comparison to other similarly sized mammals, allows their young to be born in an undeveloped state. Consequently, these animals have been viewed as primitive or second-class mammals. However, some now see that the reproductive process of Marsupials has an advantage over that of placental mammals. A female marsupial invests relatively few resources during the brief gestation period. More so during the lactation, nursing period, when the young are in the marsupium. If the female marsupial loses its young, it can conceive again sooner than a placental mammal in a comparable situation. What are some animals that have pouches? Marsupials, meaning pouched animals differ from all other living mammals in their anatomical and physiological features of reproduction. 
Most female marsupials, including kangaroos, bandicoots, wombats, banded anteaters, koalas, possums, wallabies, and Tasmanian devils. Possess an abdominal pouch, called a marsupium, in which their young are carried. In some small terrestrial marsupials, however, the marsupium is not a true pouch but merely a fold of skin around the mammy, milk nipples. The short gestation period in marsupials, in comparison to other similarly sized mammals, allows their young to be born in an undeveloped state. Consequently, these animals have been viewed as primitive or second-class mammals. However, some now see that the reproductive process of marsupials has an advantage over that of placental mammals. A female marsupial invests relatively few resources during the brief gestation period. More so during the lactation, nursing period, when the young are in the marsupium. If the female marsupial loses its young, it can conceive again sooner than a placental mammal in a comparable situation. Which mammals lay eggs and suckle their young? The duck-billed platypus, Ornithorhynchus anatinus, the short-nosed echidna or spiny anteater. Tachyglossus aculeatus, and the long-nosed echidna, Zaglossus bruigeni. Indigenous to Australia, Tasmania, and New Guinea, are the only three species of mammals that lay eggs. A non-mammalian feature, but suckle their young, a mammalian feature. These mammals, order Monotremata, resemble reptiles in that they lay rubbery. Shell-covered eggs that are incubated and hatched outside the mother's body. In addition, they resemble reptiles in their digestive, reproductive, and excretory systems. And in a number of anatomical details, eye structure. Presence of certain skull bones, pectoral shoulder girdle and rib and vertebral structures. They are, however, classed as mammals because they have fur and a four-chambered heart. Nurse their young from gland milk, are warm-blooded, and have some mammalian skeletal features. Which mammals lay eggs and suckle their young? The duck-billed platypus, Ornithorhynchus anatinus, the short-nosed echidna or spiny anteater. Tachyglossus aculeatus, and the long-nosed echidna, Zaglossus bruigeni. Indigenous to Australia, Tasmania, and New Guinea, are the only three species of mammals that lay eggs. A non-mammalian feature, but suckle their young, a mammalian feature. These mammals, order Monotremata, resemble reptiles in that they lay rubbery. Shell-covered eggs that are incubated and hatched outside the mother's body. In addition, they resemble reptiles in their digestive, reproductive, and excretory systems. And in a number of anatomical details, eye structure. Presence of certain skull bones, pectoral shoulder girdle, and rib, and vertebral structures. They are, however, 
classed as mammals because they have fur and a four-chambered heart. Nurse their young from gland milk, are warm-blooded, and have some mammalian skeletal features. What freshwater mammal is venomous? The male duck-billed platypus, Ornithorhynchus anatinus, has venomous spurs located on its hind legs. When threatened, the animal will drive them into the skin of a potential enemy, inflicting a painful sting. The venom this action releases is relatively mild and generally not harmful to humans. What freshwater mammal is venomous? The male duck-billed platypus, Ornithorhynchus anatinus, has venomous spurs located on its hind legs. When threatened, the animal will drive them into the skin of a potential enemy, inflicting a painful sting. The venom this action releases is relatively mild and generally not harmful to humans. What is the difference between porpoises and dolphins? Marine dolphins, family Delphinidae, and porpoises, family Phocinidae, together comprise about 40 species. The chief differences between dolphins and porpoises occur in the snout and teeth. True dolphins have a beak-like snout and cone-shaped teeth. True porpoises have a rounded snout and flat or spade-shaped teeth. What is the difference between porpoises and dolphins? Marine dolphins, family Delphinidae, and porpoises, family Phocinidae, together comprise about 40 species. The chief differences between dolphins and porpoises occur in the snout and teeth. True dolphins have a beak-like snout and cone-shaped teeth. True porpoises have a rounded snout and flat or spade-shaped teeth. What is the fastest swimming whale? The orca or killer whale, or sinus orca, is the fastest swimming whale. In fact, it is the fastest swimming marine mammal with speeds that reach 31 miles per hour, 50 kilometers per hour. What is the fastest swimming whale? The orca or killer whale, or sinus orca, is the fastest swimming whale. In fact, it is the fastest swimming marine mammal with speeds that reach 31 miles per hour, 50 kilometers per hour. What is the name of the seal-like animal in Florida?
the West Indian manatee, Trechus manatus, in the winter. Moves to more temperate parts of Florida, such as the warm headwaters of the Crystal and Homosassa rivers in central Florida or the tropical waters of southern Florida. When the air temperature rises to 50 degrees Fahrenheit 10 degrees Celsius. It will wander back along the Gulf Coast and up the Atlantic Coast as far as Virginia. Long-range offshore migrations to the coast of Guiana and South America have been documented. In 1893, when the population of manatees in Florida was reduced to several thousand. The state gave it legal protection from being hunted or commercially exploited. However, many animals continue to be killed or injured by the encroachment of humans. Entrapment in locks and dams, collisions with barges and power boat propellers. And other man-made objects, cause at least 30% of the manatee deaths, which total 125 to 130 annually. What is the name of the seal-like animal in Florida? The West Indian manatee, Trechus manatus, in the winter. Moves to more temperate parts of Florida, such as the warm headwaters of the Crystal and Homosassa rivers in central Florida or the tropical waters of southern Florida. When the air temperature rises to 50 degrees Fahrenheit 10 degrees Celsius. It will wander back along the Gulf Coast and up the Atlantic Coast as far as Virginia. Long-range offshore migrations to the coast of Guiana and South America have been documented. In 1893, when the population of manatees in Florida was reduced to several thousand. The state gave it legal protection from being hunted or commercially exploited. However, many animals continue to be killed or injured by the encroachment of humans. Entrapment in locks and dams, collisions with barges and power boat propellers. And other man-made objects, cause at least 30% of the manatee deaths, which total 125 to 130 annually. What is the only four-horned animal in the world? The four-horned antelope, Tetracerus quadricornis, is a native of central India. The males have two short horns, usually four inches, ten centimeters, in length, between their ears and an even shorter pair, 1 to 2 inches, 2.5 to 5 centimeters, long, between the brow ridges over their eyes. Not all males have four horns. And in some the second pair eventually falls off. The females have no horns at all. What is the only four-horned animal in the world? The four-horned antelope, Tetracerus quadricornis, is a native of central India. The males have two short horns, usually four inches, ten centimeters, in length, between their ears and an even shorter pair, 1 to 2 inches, 
2.5 to 5 cm, long, between the brow ridges over their eyes. Not all males have four horns. And in some the second pair eventually falls off. The females have no horns at all. Which mammals lay eggs and suckle their young? The duck-billed platypus, Ornithorhynchus anatinus, the short-nosed echidna or spiny anteater. Tachyglossus aculeatus, and the long-nosed echidna, Zaglossus bruigeni. Indigenous to Australia, Tasmania, and New Guinea, are the only three species of mammals that lay eggs. A non-mammalian feature, but suckle their young, a mammalian feature. These mammals, order Monotremata, resemble reptiles in that they lay rubbery. Shell-covered eggs that are incubated and hatched outside the mother's body. In addition, they resemble reptiles in their digestive, reproductive, and excretory systems. And in a number of anatomical details, eye structure. Presence of certain skull bones, pectoral shoulder girdle, and rib, and vertebral structures. They are, however, classed as mammals because they have fur and a four-chambered heart. Nurse their young from gland milk, are warm-blooded, and have some mammalian skeletal features. What is the fastest swimming whale? The orca or killer whale or Sinus orca, is the fastest swimming whale. In fact, it is the fastest swimming marine mammal with speeds that reach 31 miles per hour, 50 kilometers per hour. How long does it take the average spider to weave a complete web? The average orb weaver spider takes 30 to 60 minutes to completely spin its web. These species of spiders, order Araneae, use silk to capture their food in a variety of ways. Ranging from the simple trip wires used by large bird eating spiders to the complicated and beautiful webs spun by orb spiders. Some species produce funnel-shaped webs, and other communities of spiders build communal webs. A completed web features several spokes leading from the initial structure. The number and nature of the spokes depend on the species. The spider replaces any damaged threads by gathering up. The thread in front of it and producing a new one behind it. The orb web must be replaced every few days because it loses its stickiness. And its ability to entrap food. What are the upper and lower shells of a turtle called? The turtle, order Testudinas, uses its shell as a protective device. The upper shell is called the dorsal carapace and the lower shell is called the ventral plastron. The shell sections are referred to as the scutes. 
The carapace and the plastron are joined at the sides. How fast does a hummingbird fly and how far does the hummingbird migrate? Hummingbirds fly at speeds up to 71 miles, 80 kilometers, per hour. The longest migratory flight of a hummingbird documented to date is the Flight of a Rufus Hummingbird from Ramsey Canyon, Arizona, to near Mt. St. Helens, Washington, a distance of 1,414 miles, 2,277 kilometers. Bird banding studies are now in progress to verify that a few Rufus Hummingbirds do make a 11,000 to 11,500 mile. 17,699 to 18,503 km Journey along a super Great Basin High Route, a circuit that could take a year to complete. Hummingbird studies, however, are difficult to complete because so few banded birds are recovered. What bird has the biggest wingspan? Three members of the albatross family the wandering albatross, Diomede exculens, the royal albatross. Diomede epomophora, and the Amsterdam island albatross, Diomeda amsterdi immensis have the greatest wingspan of any bird species with a spread of 8 to 11 feet, 2.5 to 3.3 meters. Are tortoises and terrapins the same as turtles? The terms turtle, tortoise, and terrapin are used for various members of the order Testudinus. From the Latin term testudo, meaning tortoise. In North American usage they are all correctly called turtles. The term tortoise is often used for land turtles. In British usage the term tortoise is the inclusive term and turtle is only applied to aquatic members of the order. What has been the impact of zebra mussels on North American waterways? Zebra mussels, Dryasina polymorpha, are black and white striped bivalve mollusks. They are hard shelled species that adhere to hard surfaces with bissel threads. They were probably introduced to North America in 1985 or 1986 via a discharge of a foreign ship's ballast water into Lake St. Clair. They have spread throughout the Great Lakes the Mississippi River, and as far east as the Hudson River. High densities of zebra mussels have been found in the intakes, pipes, and heat exchangers of waterways throughout the world. They can clog the water intakes of power plants, industrial sites, and public drinking water systems. Foul boat hulls and engine cooling water systems. And disrupt aquatic ecosystems. Water processing facilities must be cleaned manually to rid the systems of the mussels. 
Zebra mussels are a threat to surface water resources because they reproduce quickly. Have free swimming larvae and rapid growth, lack competitors for space or food, and have no predators. Why are arthropods considered the most biologically successful phylum of animals? Members of the phylum Arthropoda are characterized by jointed appendages and an exoskeleton of chitin. There are more than one million species of arthropods currently known to science. And many biologists believe there are millions more to be identified. Arthropods are the most biologically successful group of animals because they are the most diverse and live in a greater range of habitats than do the members of any other phylum of animals. Why do birds migrate annually? Migratory behavior in birds is inherited, however. Birds will not migrate without certain physiological and environmental stimuli. In the late summer, the decrease in sunlight stimulates the pituitary gland and the adrenal gland of migrating birds, causing them to produce the hormones prolactin and corticosterone respectively. These hormones in turn cause the birds to accumulate large amounts of fat just under the skin, providing them with enough energy for the long migratory flights. The hormones also cause the birds to become restless just prior to migration. The exact time of departure, however, is dictated not only by the decreasing sunlight and hormonal changes, but also by such conditions as the availability of food and the onset of cold weather. The major wintering areas for North American migrating Birds are the southern United States and Central America. Migrating ducks follow four major flyways south, the Atlantic Flyway, the Mississippi Flyway, the Central Flyway, and the Pacific Flyway. Some bird experts propose that the birds return north to breed for several reasons. One, birds return to nest because there is a huge insect supply for their young, too, the higher Earth's latitude in the summer in the northern hemisphere. The longer the daylight available to the parents to find food for their young. 3. Less competition exists for food and nesting sites in the north, 4. In the north. There are fewer mammal predators for nesting birds, which are particularly vulnerable during the nesting stage. 5. Birds migrate south to escape the cold weather, and they return north when the weather is more temperate. How many eggs does a spider lay? The number of eggs varies according to the species. Some larger spiders lay over 2,000 eggs. But many tiny spiders lay one or two and perhaps no more than a dozen during their lifetime. Spiders of average size probably lay a hundred or so. Most spiders lay all their eggs at one time and enclose them in a single egg sac. 
Others lay eggs over a period of time and enclose them in a number of egg sacs. How fast do a hummingbird's wings move? Hummingbirds are the only family of birds that can truly hover in still air for any length of time. They need to do so in order to hang in front of a flower while they perform the delicate task of inserting their slim, sharp bills into its depths to drink nectar. Their thin wings are not contoured into the shape of aerofoils and do not generate lift in this way. Their paddle-shaped wings are, in effect, hands that swivel at the shoulder. They beat them in such a way that the tip of each wing follows the line of a figure eight lying on its side. The wing moves forward and downwards into the front loop of the eight, creating lift. As it begins to come up and go back, the wing twists through 180 degrees so that once again it creates a downward thrust. The hummingbird's method of flying does have one major limitation. The smaller the wing, the faster it has to beat in order to produce sufficient downward thrust. An average sized hummingbird beats its wings 25 times per second. Small species beat their wings 50 to 80 times per second, and even faster during courtship displays. The bee hummingbird, native to Cuba, is only 2 inches, 5 centimeters. Long and beats its wings at an astonishing 200 times per second. How are pearls created? Pearls are formed in saltwater oysters and freshwater clams. There is a curtain-like tissue called the mantle within the body of these mollusks. Certain cells on the side of the mantle toward the shell secrete nacre. Also known as mother of pearl, during a specific stage of the shell building process. A pearl is the result of an oyster's reaction to a foreign body. Such as a piece of sand or a parasite, within the oyster's shell. The oyster neutralizes the invader by secreting thin layers of nacre around the foreign body eventually building it into a pearl. The thin layers are alternately composed of calcium carbonate, argonite, and conchylin. Irritants intentionally placed within an oyster result in the production of what are called cultured pearls. Do all birds fly? Oh. Among the flightless birds, the penguins and the ratites are the best known. Ratites include emus, kiwis, ostriches, rheas, and cassowaries. They are called ratite because they lack a keel on the breastbone. All of these birds have wings but lost their power to fly millions of years ago. Many birds that live isolated on oceanic islands, for example, the great auk, apparently became flightless in the absence of predators and the consequent gradual disuse of their wings for escape.
What are the largest and smallest aerial spider webs? The largest aerial webs are spun by the tropical orb weavers of the genus Nephila, which produce webs that measure up to 18.9 feet, 6 meters, in circumference. The smallest webs are produced by the species Glyphosis cottony. Their webs cover an area of about 0.75 square inch, 4.84 square centimeters. When was the bald eagle adopted as the national bird of the United States? On June 20, 1782, the citizens of the newly independent United States of America adopted the bald or American eagle as their national emblem. At first the heraldic artists depicted a bird that could have been a member of any of the larger species. But by 1902, the bird portrayed on the seal of the United States of America had assumed its proper white plumage on the head and tail. The choice of the bald eagle was not unanimous, Benjamin Franklin, 1706-1790, preferred the wild turkey. Oftentimes a tongue-in-cheek humorist, Franklin thought the turkey a wily but brave, intelligent and prudent bird. He viewed the eagle on the other hand as having a bad moral character and not getting his living honestly. Preferring instead to steal fish from hard-working fish hawks. He also found the eagle a coward that readily flees from the irritating attacks of the much smaller king bird. Which bird migrates the greatest distance? The arctic tern, Sterna paradisia, migrates the longest distance of any bird. They breed from subarctic regions to the very limits of land in the Arctic of North America and Eurasia. At the end of the northern summer, the arctic tern leaves the north on a migration of more than 11,000 miles. 17,699 kilometers, to its southern home in Antarctica. A turn tagged in July on the Arctic coast of Russia was recovered the next May near Fremantle. Australia, a record 14,000 miles, 22,526 kilometers, away. Are spiders really dangerous? Most spiders are harmless organisms that, rather than being dangerous to humans, are actually allies in the continuing battle to control insects. Most venom produced by spiders to kill prey is usually harmless to humans. However, there are two spiders in the United States that can produce severe or even fatal bites. They are the black widow spider, Latrodectus mactans, and the brown recluse spider, Loxocells reclusa. Black widows are shiny black with a bright red hourglass on the underside of the abdomen. The venom of the black widow is neurotoxic and affects the nervous system. 
about 4 out of 1,000 black widow bites have been reported as fatal. Brown recluse spiders have a violin-shaped strip on their back. How does a bat catch flying insects in total darkness? Bats use sound waves for communication and navigation. They emit supersonic radiation ranging from as low as 200 Hz to as high as 30,000 Hz. The sounds are emitted through the bat's nostrils or mouth and are aided by a complex flap structure to provide precise directivity to the radiation. Echo returns from the emissions allow a bat to pick out a tiny flying insect some distance ahead. Highly sensitive ears and an ability to maneuver with great agility enables many bats to fly around in a darkened cave, catching insects without fear of collision. How many tentacles do the cephalopods have? Octopods have eight tentacles or arms, squids have ten tentacles. And there are as many as ninety in the chambered nautilus. What are the only mammals that cannot jump? It might not be surprising to learn that neither the rhinoceros nor the elephant can jump. Since their enormous weight makes the feat difficult. However, the third mammal that cannot jump is the pronghorn sheep which was called an antelope in the famous song Home on the Range. The pronghorn sheep's inability to jump has been a particular disadvantage in its North American home, where fences have prevented populations from migrating and hindered the pronghorn's ability to find mates and breed. What accounts for the different colors of bird feathers? The vivid color of feathers is of two kinds, pigmentary and structural. Red, orange and yellow feathers are colored by pigments called lipochromes deposited in the feather barbules as they are formed. Black, brown, and gray colors are from another pigment, melanin. Blue feathers depend not on pigment but on scattering of shorter wavelengths of light by particles within the feather. These are structural feathers. Green colors are almost always a combination of yellow pigment and blue feather structure. Another kind of structural color is the beautiful iridescent color of many birds, which ranges from red, orange, copper, and gold to green, blue, and violet. Iridescent color is based on interference that causes light waves to reinforce, weaken, or eliminate each other. Iridescent colors may change with the angle of view. What are some animals that have pouches?
marsupials, meaning pouched animals. Differ from all other living mammals in their anatomical and physiological features of reproduction. Most female marsupials, including kangaroos, bandicoots, wombats, banded anteaters, koalas, possums, wallabies, and Tasmanian devils. Possess an abdominal pouch, called a marsupium, in which their young are carried. In some small terrestrial marsupials, however, the marsupium is not a true pouch but merely a fold of skin around the mammy, milk nipples. The short gestation period in marsupials, in comparison to other similarly sized mammals, allows their young to be born in an undeveloped state. Consequently, these animals have been viewed as primitive or second-class mammals. However, some now see that the reproductive process of marsupials has an advantage over that of placental mammals. A female marsupial invests relatively few resources during the brief gestation period. More so during the lactation, nursing period, when the young are in the marsupium. If the female marsupial loses its young, it can conceive again sooner than a placental mammal in a comparable situation. Are freshwater clams an endangered group? Although freshwater clams are found on every continent except Antarctica, they are now considered one of the most jeopardized groups of animals in the world. Approximately 270 species belong to the family Unionidae, found in North America. A total of 72% of our 270 native mussel species are listed as recently extinct. Endangered, threatened, or of special concern due to human impact on aquatic habitat, commercial harvesting. The introduction of carp, water pollution, and the invasion of zebra mussels. Do any mammals fly? Bats, order Chiroptera with 986 species, are the only truly flying mammals. Although several gliding mammals are referred to as flying, such as the flying squirrel and flying lemur. The wings of bats are double membranes of skin stretching from the sides of the body to the hind legs and tail. And are actually skin extensions of the back and belly. The wing membranes are supported by the elongated fingers of the forelimbs, or arms. Nocturnal, active at night, ranging in length from 1.5 inches, 25 millimeters, to 1.3 feet, 40.6 centimeters, and living in caves or crevices. Bats inhabit most of the temperate and tropical regions of both hemispheres. The majority of species feed on insects and fruit. While some tropical species eat pollen and nectar of flowers, and insects found inside them. Moderate-sized species usually prey on small mammals, birds, lizards, and frogs, and some eat fish. But true vampire bats, three species, eat the blood of animals by making an Incision in the animal's skin from these bats, 
animals can contract rabies. Most bats do not find their way around by sight but have evolved a sonar system. Called echolocation, for locating solid objects. Bats emit vocal sounds through the nose or mouth while flying. These sounds, usually above the human hearing range, are reflected back as echoes. This method enables bats, when flying in darkness, to avoid solid objects and to locate the position of flying insects. Bats have the most acute sense of hearing of any land animal. Hearing frequencies as high as 120 to 210 kHz. The highest frequency humans can hear is 20 kHz. What is the only four-horned animal in the world? The four-horned antelope, Tetracerus quadricornis, is a native of central India. The males have two short horns, usually four inches, ten centimeters, in length, between their ears. And an even shorter pair, one to two inches, 2.5 to 5 centimeters, long, between the brow ridges over their eyes. Not all males have four horns. And in some the second pair eventually falls off. The females have no horns at all. What freshwater mammal is venomous? The male duck-billed platypus, Ornithorhynchus anatinus, has venomous spurs located on its hind legs. When threatened, the animal will drive them into the skin of a potential enemy, inflicting a painful sting. The venom this action releases is relatively mild and generally not harmful to humans. Which mollusks produce the most cultured pearls? Cultured pearls are produced by both freshwater and marine mollusks. Most of the world's cultured pearls, known as freshwater pearls, are produced by freshwater mussels belonging to the family Unionidae. Most saltwater pearls are produced by three species of oysters belonging to the genus Pinctida, including Pinctida imbricata, Pinctida maxima, and Pinctida margaritifer. What is the name of the seal like animal in Florida? The West Indian manatee, Trechus manatus, in the winter, moves to more temperate parts of Florida, such as the warm headwaters of the Crystal and Homosassa rivers in central Florida or the tropical waters of southern Florida. When the air temperature rises to 50 degrees Fahrenheit 10 degrees Celsius, it will wander back along the Gulf Coast and up the Atlantic Coast as far as Virginia. Long-range offshore migrations to the coast of Guyana and South America have been documented. In 1893, when the population of manatees in Florida was reduced to several thousand, 
the state gave it legal protection from being hunted or commercially exploited. However, many animals continue to be killed or injured by the encroachment of humans. Entrapment in locks and dams, collisions with barges and power boat propellers. And other man-made objects, cause at least 30% of the manatee deaths, which total 125 to 130 annually. How large is the arthropod population? Zoologists estimate that the arthropod population of the world, including crustaceans, spiders, and insects, numbers about a billion million, 1,018, individuals. More than one million arthropod species have been described. With insects making up the vast majority of them. In fact, two out of every three organisms known on Earth are arthropods. And the phylum is represented in nearly all habitats of the biosphere. About 90% of all arthropods are insects, and about half of the named species of insects are beetles. How many species of insects are there? Estimates of the number of recognized insect species range from about 750 000 to upward of 1 million but some experts think that this represents less than half of the number that exists in the world. About 7,000 new insect species are described each year. But unknown numbers are lost annually from the destruction of their habitats, mainly tropical forests. What is the difference between porpoises and dolphins? Marine dolphins, family Delphinidae, and porpoises, family Phocinidae, together comprise about 40 species. The chief differences between dolphins and porpoises occur in the snout and teeth. True dolphins have a beak-like snout and cone-shaped teeth. True porpoises have a rounded snout and flat or spade-shaped teeth. How fast can a crocodile run on land? In smaller crocodiles, the running gait can change into a bounding gallop. That can achieve speeds of 2 to 10 miles, 3 to 17 kilometers, per hour. Which mammals have the shortest gestation periods? Gestation is the period of time between fertilization and birth in oviparous animals. The shortest gestation period known is 12 to 13 days, shared by three marsupials. The American or Virginian opossum, Didelphys marsupialis, the rare water opossum, or Yapak, Chironectes minimus. Of Central and Northern South America, and the Eastern native cat, 
Dossi Urus viverinus, of Australia. The young of each of these marsupials are born while still immature and complete their development in the ventral pouch of their mother. While 12 to 13 days is the average, the gestation period is sometimes as short as 8 days. The longest gestation period for a mammal is that of the African elephant. Loxodonta africana, with an average of 660 days, and a maximum of 760 days. What names are used for groups of birds? A group of birds in general is called a congregation, flight, flock, voli, or volley. Below is a list specific to types of birds. Why do geese fly in formation? Aerodynamicists have suspected that long-distance migratory birds, such as geese and swans, adapt the V formation in order to reduce the amount of energy needed for such long flights. According to theoretical calculations, birds flying in a V formation can fly some 10% farther than a lone bird can. Formation flying lessens the drag, the air pressure that pushes against the wings. The effect is similar to flying in a thermal upcurrent, where less total lift power is needed. In addition, when flying, each bird creates behind it a small area of disturbed air. Any bird flying directly behind it would be caught in this turbulence. In the V formation of Canada geese, each bird flies not directly behind the other, but to one side or above the bird in front. Is there a cat that lives in the desert? The sand cat, Felis margarita, is the only member of the cat family tied directly to desert regions. Found in North Africa, the Arabian Peninsula, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan and western Pakistan, the sand cat has adapted to extremely arid desert areas. The padding on the solace of its feet is well suited to the loose sandy soil. And it can live without drinking freestanding water. Having sandy or grayish ochre dense fur, its body length is 17.5 to 22 inches, 45 to 57 centimeters. Mainly nocturnal, active at night, the cat feeds on rodents, hares, birds, and reptiles. The Chinese desert cat, Felis biotti, does not live in the desert as its name implies. But inhabits the steppe country and mountains. Likewise, the Asiatic desert cat, Felis sylvestris or nata. Inhabits the open plains of India, Pakistan, Iran, and Asiatic Russia. Is there a cat that lives in the desert? The sand cat, Felis margarita, 
is the only member of the cat family tied directly to desert regions. Found in North Africa, the Arabian Peninsula, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and Western Pakistan, the sand cat has adapted to extremely arid desert areas. The padding on the solace of its feet is well suited to the loose sandy soil. And it can live without drinking freestanding water. Having sandy or grayish ochre dense fur, its body length is 17.5 to 22 inches, 45 to 57 centimeters. Mainly nocturnal, active at night, the cat feeds on rodents, hares, birds, and reptiles. The Chinese desert cat, Felispiety, does not live in the desert as its name implies. But inhabits the steppe country and mountains. Likewise, the Asiatic desert cat, Fela Silvestris ornata, inhabits the open plains of India, Pakistan, Iran, and Asiatic Russia. What is the only American canine that can climb trees? The gray fox, Eurocean scenario Argentus, is the only American canine that can climb trees. What is the only American canine that can climb trees? The gray fox, Eurocean scenario Argentus, is the only American canine that can climb trees. Which bear lives in a tropical rainforest? The Malayan sun bear. Ursus malayanus, is one of the rarest animals in the tropical forests of Sumatra. The Malay Peninsula, Borneo, Burma, Thailand, and southern China. The smallest bear species, with a length of 3.3 to 4.6 feet, 1 to 1.4 meters. And weighing 60 to 143 pounds, 27 to 65 kilograms, it has a strong, stocky body. Against its black, short fur it has a characteristic orange-yellow colored crescent across its chest. Which according to legend represents the rising sun. With powerful paws having long, Curved claws to help it climb trees in the dense forests, it is an expert tree climber. The sun bear tears at tree bark to expose insects, larvae, and the nests of bees and termites. Fruit, coconut palms, and small rodents are also part of its diet. Sleeping and sunbathing during the day, it is active at night. Unusually shy and retiring, cautious, and intelligent. The sun bear is declining in population as its native forests are being destroyed. Which bear lives in a tropical rainforest? The Malayan sun bear, Ursus malayanus, is one of the rarest animals in the tropical forests of Sumatra. The Malay Peninsula, Borneo, Burma, Thailand, and southern China. 
the smallest bear species, with a length of 3.3 to 4.6 feet, 1 to 1.4 meters. And weighing 60 to 143 pounds, 27 to 65 kilograms, it has a strong, stocky body. Against its black, short fur it has a characteristic orange-yellow colored crescent across its chest. Which according to legend represents the rising sun. With powerful paws having long, curved claws to help it climb trees in the dense forests, it is an expert tree climber. The sun bear tears at tree bark to expose insects, larvae, and the nests of bees and termites. Fruit, coconut palms, and small rodents are also part of its diet. Sleeping and sunbathing during the day, it is active at night. Unusually shy and retiring, cautious, and intelligent. The sun bear is declining in population as its native forests are being destroyed. What is the largest terrestrial mammal in North America? The bison, bison bison, is the largest terrestrial mammal in North America. It weighs 3,100 pounds, 1,406 lyograms, and is 6 feet, 1.8 meters, high. What is the largest terrestrial mammal in North America? The bison, bison bison, is the largest terrestrial mammal in North America. It weighs 3,100 pounds, 1,406 lyograms, and is 6 feet, 1.8 meters, high. Do camels store water in their humps? The hump or humps do not store water, since they are fat reservoirs. The ability to go long periods without drinking water, up to 10 months if there is plenty. Of green vegetation and due to feed on, results from a number of physiological adaptations. One major factor is that camels can lose up to 40% of their body weight with no ill effects. A camel can also withstand a variation of its body temperature by as much as 14 degrees. A camel can drink 30 gallons of water in 10 minutes and up to 50 gallons over several hours. A one-humped camel is called a dromedary or Arabian camel. A Bactrian camel has two humps and lives in the wild on the Goba Desert. Today, the Bactrian is confined to Asia, while most of the Arabian camels are on African soil. Do camels store water in their humps? The hump or humps do not store water, since they are fat reservoirs. The ability to go long periods without drinking water, up to 10 months if there is plenty. Of green vegetation and due to feed on, results from a number of physiological adaptations. 
One major factor is that camels can lose up to 40% of their body weight with no ill effects. A camel can also withstand a variation of its body temperature by as much as 14 degrees. A camel can drink 30 gallons of water in 10 minutes and up to 50 gallons over several hours. A one-humped camel is called a dromedary or Arabian camel. A Bactrian camel has two humps and lives in the wild on the Goba Desert. Today, the Bactrian is confined to Asia, while most of the Arabian camels are on African soil. How many quills does a porcupine have? For its defensive weapon, the average North American porcupine has about 30,000 quills or specialized hairs. Comparable in hardness and flexibility to slivers of celluloid and so sharply pointed that they can penetrate any hide. The quills that do the most damage are the short ones that stud the porcupine's muscular tail. With a few lashes, the porcupine can send a rain of quills that have tiny scale-like barbs into the skin of its adversary. The quills work their way inward because of their barbs and the involuntary muscular action of the victim. Sometimes the quills can work themselves out. But other times the quills pierce vital organs, and the victim dies. Slow-footed and stocky, porcupines spend much of their time in the trees. Using their formidable incisors to strip off bark and foliage for their food, and supplement their diets with fruits and grasses. Porcupines have a ravenous appetite for salt, as herbivores. Plant-eating animals, their diets have insufficient salt. So natural salt licks, animal bones left by carnivores, meat-eating animals. Yellow pond lilies, and other items having a high salt content, including paints, plywood adhesives. And human clothing that bears traces of sweat, have a strong appeal to porcupines. How many quills does a porcupine have? For its defensive weapon, the average North American porcupine has about 30,000 quills or specialized hairs. Comparable in hardness and flexibility to Slivers of celluloid and so sharply pointed that they can penetrate any hide. The quills that do the most damage are the short ones that stud the porcupine's muscular tail. With a few lashes, the porcupine can send a rain of quills. That have tiny scale-like barbs into the skin of its adversary. The quills work their way inward because of their barbs and the involuntary muscular action of the victim. Sometimes the quills can work themselves out. But other times the quills pierce vital organs, and the victim dies. Slow-footed and stocky, porcupines spend much of their time in the trees. Using their formidable incisors to strip off bark and foliage for their food, and supplement their diets with fruits and grasses. Porcupines have a ravenous appetite for salt, as herbivores. Plant eating animals, their diets have insufficient salt. So natural salt licks, 
animal bones left by carnivores, meat-eating animals. Yellow pond lilies, and other items having a high salt content, including paints, plywood adhesives, and human clothing that bears traces of sweat, have a strong appeal to porcupines. Why do cows have four stomachs? The stomachs of cows, as well as all ruminants, are divided into four sections the rumen, reticulum, omasum, and abomasums. Ruminants eat rapidly and do not chew much of their food completely before they swallow it. The liquid part of their food enters the reticulum first, while the solid part of their food enters the rumen where it softens. Bacteria in the rumen initially break it down as a first step in digestion. Ruminants later regurgitate it into the mouth where they chew their cud. Cows chew their cud about six to eight times per day. Spending a total of five to seven hours in rumination. The chewed cud goes directly into the other chambers of the stomach. Where various microorganisms assist in further digestion. Why do cows have four stomachs? The stomachs of cows, as well as all ruminants, are divided into four sections the rumen, reticulum, omasum, and abomasums. Ruminants eat rapidly and do not chew much of their food completely before they swallow it. The liquid part of their food enters the reticulum first, while the solid part of their food enters the rumen where it softens. Bacteria in the rumen initially break it down as a first step in digestion. Ruminants later regurgitate it into the mouth where they chew their cud. Cows chew their cud about six to eight times per day. Spending a total of five to seven hours in rumination. The chewed cud goes directly into the other chambers of the stomach. Where various microorganisms assist in further digestion. Why were Clydesdale horses used as war horses? The Clydesdales were among a group of European horses referred to as the Great Horses, which were specifically bred to carry the massively armored knights of the Middle Ages. These animals had to be strong enough to carry a man wearing as much as 100 pounds, 45 kilograms, of armor as well as up to 80 pounds, 36 kilograms, of armor on their own bodies. However, the invention of the musket quickly ended the use of Clydesdales and other great horses on the battlefield as speed and maneuverability became more important than strength. Why were Clydesdale horses used as war horses? The Clydesdales were among a group of European horses referred to as the Great Horses, which were specifically bred to carry the massively armored knights of the Middle Ages. 
these animals had to be strong enough to carry a man wearing as much as 100 pounds. 45 kilograms of armor as well as up to 80 pounds, 36 kilograms of armor on their own bodies. However, the invention of the musket quickly ended the use of Clydesdales and other great horses on the battlefield as speed and maneuverability became more important than strength. Why are Dalmatians firehouse dogs? Before automobiles, coaches and carriages were often accompanied by dogs that kept horses company and guarded them from theft. Dalmatians were particularly well known for the strong bond they formed with horses and firemen who often owned the strongest and speediest horses in the area kept the dogs at the station to deter horse thieves although fire engines have replaced horses dalmatians have remained a part of firehouse life both for the appeal of these beautiful dogs and for their nostalgic tie to the past Why are Dalmatians firehouse dogs? Before automobiles, coaches and carriages were often accompanied by dogs that kept horses company and guarded them from theft. Dalmatians were particularly well known for the strong bond they formed with horses and firemen who often owned the strongest and speediest horses in the area kept the dogs at the station to deter horse thieves although fire engines have replaced horses dalmatians have remained a part of firehouse life both for the appeal of these beautiful dogs and for their nostalgic tie to the past